Hello, today's project is installing this light strip into the cabinet behind me, which is my server cabinet slash tourism book cupboard, Meh. and a door sensor that when I open the door, this will turn on. And I'm gonna do all that through Wi-Fi, the Govi account, home assistant, and automation. It's gonna be pretty cool, but let's see what we've got to deal with, right? So first, here's the light strip, just a little box. It's just a roll, um, pretty simple. It has inside, it has a, a little uh, switch. It has, whoops, sorry, it has a switch. It has a power supply and that's it. You connect it to Wi-Fi. And then there's the, uh, I haven't even opened this yet. Here's the door sensor. This is a Xiaomi Acara door sensor. So I've already got a, humid, a temperature sensor in here as well, temperature and humidity. And I am going to use this door sensor, obviously, to when I open the door, uh, let's see it here. Whoop, whoop, things coming out. Ah, come on. Just a little thing here. And so you put one on the door and one on the frame, and then there's an action or an event when the door opens and closes. So the idea is that when you open the door, the light will turn on. If the light, sorry, if the temperature in the cupboard is too high, because I've got a temperature sensor in there, so over 30 degrees Celsius, the light will be red to indicate that it's too hot. Um, and the fan will probably be on there in there as well. There's another automation part of it that if the temperature is too high. There's a fan, that exhaust fan. So that's the plan. Install light, install door sensor, connect it all up into Home Assistant, and then create an automation for the door sensor and the light. Okay, it's actually pretty easy to install these door sensors because um, as you can see, it just has these two little things. So uh, the instructions say to put the bigger one, the, mag, the, the active component, be in the stationary position. So I'm going to put that on here, on the actual, um, you know, frame of the uh, of the door. Or so of the, the well, the door frame. Yeah. And the little one, which is a magnet. There's nothing active about this. Just a magnet is going to go on on the door on there. So that's just a matter of sticking. I'm going to put this one on first because that is going to stick in further. So I'm actually going to do it with the door closed because that seems like the easiest way. Um, it says they have to be within 22 mil from each other. And I'm, uh, uh, so that should be doable. That's a fair bit, 22 mil. It's almost an inch, not quite. So we're going to put that on the inside door here. Just there. So that sits in there. You can see it there probably. Don't know. And then we're going to put the active component, the actual sensor. It's going to go on the door frame. So take off this sticky bit and close the door. And then we're going to stick that up here, just like that. And that's it. Now yeah, you can see, there, closed, open. Alright, that's it. Let's have a look at how we set up this uh, door sensor in Home Assistant. So I'm going to go into Decons. So I'm using the uh, Convi 2 Zigbee Gateway by Dresden Electronique, which is a very, very, very cool device. It's like a universal gateway for Zigbee. So check that out if you don't know it. I'll put a link in the description as well. Uh, yeah, obviously type my password in and there. Now I'm in within my Zigbee uh, gateway controller. So I can go in here, I can add a new sensor. So I go to sensors and here are the current sensors I have. So there's a couple of temperature sensors and there's a motion sensor for a bit of testing before I put all of them up. And uh, I just go to add new sensor and it searches for it. And then within, oh, I think this took about 20, 30 seconds. Um, I am pressing the little reset button on the uh, door sensor as well. And that means that it just finds it and says sensor's ready. And that's it. The sensor is now within my Zigbee network. Now it says 30 degrees there as well. You can see temperature 30 degrees. I thought that was the actually a temperature sensor in it. I thought, hey, bonus. No, this is just the internal temperature of the device. So it doesn't actually do anything. It only updates once an hour. It's not very useful. Change the name, please do give your devices good names because otherwise when you have many, suddenly you cannot find anything. Give them good names. There it is, server cabinet door sensor. It's now set up and you can see here that I'm opening and closing the door. You can see the, the uh, action is immediate and the event fires, open, closed, open, closed, and that's it. Now we set up a door sensor. Now we'll put this strip on, the LED strip. Uh, there's five meters of it, which is a little bit more 
uh, a little bit less rather than uh, what I need here. There's about five and a half meters all the way around, but so be it. That's all right. We might not have light right to the floor. Um, I did consider putting two of these together, but that's just crazy talk. So it comes on a little roll here and uh, it has a remote on here and it has the power supply on here as well. Um, and of course I caught, bought this on Amazon in the US because it was the best price and this I bought this particular brand Govi Govi uh, because it works with Home Assistant I have found an integration point so that was a very big deal for me and then it comes with a few other screws and whatever bits I'm just gonna use the sticky tape on it and there's a remote which I probably never use because I automate it so that's what there is in the box and we'll see if we can install it right Lights all, well, they're in. They do this when you turn them on. What do you reckon, Christian? Good. <laughs> Good, yeah. A lot of light. So next is connecting them to the Wi-Fi app, or the Go Gobi app via Wi-Fi. Uh, so we can probably control them and they don't go mad like this. But pretty. So let's install the Govi Home app, which we do need to create an integration point with Home Assistant. And it's in your Play Store, it's in your App Store. Uh, you just find it, install it, it's free to download, of course, and it doesn't take very long. Once it's installed, we want to open it up. There we go, installed and open it. And the app opens up, and of course there's a bit of marketing, blah, blah here. Make your life smarter, sure, all right. Once you've gone through that, we've got to accept some terms and conditions, which I always read in full, of course. And then of course I'll need to add my uh, new LED strip here, and it's one of these. I'm actually not sure which one it is. I'm gonna pick one, multicolor something. Yep, it can lose my location, no problem. And then it searches for it via Bluetooth. So it actually connects via Bluetooth. And there's the one, I didn't actually find the right one. So it's just searched all of them and I will pick that one. Now in order to actually add this uh, device to my Goey app, I have to have an account, which makes sense because it all works over the internet. So they need to know who you are. So I'm creating a new account with my email address, me at lastclip.com. And then I will need to put in a password. Here's one I prepared earlier from LastPass and they need to put in that twice. This is actually a first for an app that you have to put in it twice. Normally they just accept it and then you forget, possibly. But anyway, I have now got an account with Gobi. So my lights are now uh, in the app. Let's give it a sec, it's connecting and it's finding the lights and there we go. So now give it a name. Again, please give these things a good name. So these are gonna be my server cabinet lights. Like so. Just put that in the ecosystem. And then it needs, of course, to connect to my uh, Wi-Fi, uh, not just via Bluetooth, so my IoT Wi-Fi, which I have all my IoT devices on. And there it is. I now have, oh, there's a version update. Yeah, always update the firmware, I think. In general, good thing, you know, check the reason notes if you need to, but update the firmware of your devices just for security reasons and compatibility reasons. And now, my Gobi light strip is in my app. Hooray! Then we need to get the Gobi lights into Home Assistant so I can control them through Home Assistant so I can do automation scenarios. So we go to integrations in the Home Assistant community store. And first I need to make the hacks, as it's called, aware of this integration. So you go up the top right there, three dots, custom integration. And then the uh, community forum post where I found this integration, I go and copy the GitHub repo address. And this is how you can add a custom repo or custom integration to Home Assistant that isn't already in Hacks. So I give it that URL and I tell it that this is an integration in the category. It could also be a theme or a Lovelace um, you know, um, widget. So I add that and now I have two. So I have already added the Wonderground uh, now I have uh, Govi as well. 
So now Hex knows about Govi. So now it knows and actually I have to go and actually install it in Hex so that it becomes an available integration. It's a little bit convoluted, but that's how Home Assistant works and it works well once you get used to it. So I need to install the version. There are several different versions I can install. That one says beta. I'm not that keen on using beta versions, if I'm honest. So I'm just going to go with 1.5. Is a bit odd. I think it's uh, been marked incorrectly because you know, I'm not showing beta versions. So once I've installed that, the Govi integration is now available. And I can then add it to my uh, current list of integrations. So all the ones I have already. So I go in and search the integrations. There's the Govi light strips or LED strips rather, and I can then add that to Home Assistant. So there's three steps. You gotta add it from the custom repo, so Hacks knows about it, you gotta install it so it becomes available, and then you gotta add that available integration. And now I need an API key, so it is back to the app. And this is why I said earlier, you do need this app for Home Assistant as well. So in the app, go to your user profile, and then right at the bottom here, if you scroll down, there is an About Us section, and in here, there is apply for API key. I'm not sure why they put it there, but that's where it is. And then uh, they want to know who you are and what you need it for. Now, I thought this was going to be some arduous process of, you know, reasoning and why I need it and, you know, back and forwards. But I just wrote integrate uh, LED or lights uh, with Home Assistant. And I thought then I was going to have to sit here and wait for you know, a day maybe, or a few hours or anything, but you submit it, it just takes a second to submit, obviously I uploaded the form, successfully submit it, and there's no edit here, you can see up the top my notifications, it goes blomp, oh, yeah, there is an email, just there, and that is the email that had the API key in it, it was that quick, so that's pretty cool. Now back to Home Assistant, I want to insert that API key into my integration when you install it, and that just takes a second to install uh, that integration so it's available. And you can see, well, we found a Govi light strip. Yep, it is successful. Hooray! So now my Govi light strip integration has one device and one entity. And obviously the device is the server cabinet lights. Again, naming is important. I named it that in the app and that's come through to Home Assistant. So now it's in here and that means I can turn it on and off the Home Assistant. Not that exciting, but it does mean that we can do integrations. So go down here to the configuration tab in Home Assistant, go to integrations, oh, sorry, automations rather. And in here, I want to add the three automations. Turn off, turn to white, turn to red. I'm going to start with a blank automation. I, I, I do find these better than the uh, it's trying to guess what you want to do. So I'm going to call this one server cabinet lights on with white and you know make it obvious what it is and i want to have a device there's many things that can trigger this but i want to trigger it via the device via the server cabinet door sensor um and so when it's opened i can then go and add a condition because remember i had this condition of below 30 above 30 turn red or white um so i'm going to use the um, the temperature sensor that i have inside of my server cabinet which is that one there, server cabinet sensor, not the battery level, no, nope, I want the temperature. And then I can say that if that is below 30, I want to make these lights white. So that's the condition, server uh, cabinet sensor temperature below 30. I go down to the device, I find the server cabinet light, and I turn them on, like so. You can also toggle, we'll turn them off. And brightness level is the only thing that I can adjust, so I'm gonna put that at 100. And that is my automation. Turn the lights on when the door opens and they're below 30 degrees. All right, so now I wanna add the second automation, which is turning uh, the lights off. So server cabinet lights off. And again, this is the device. I wanna find the door sensor for this server cabinet door. And then I choose when it is closed I then want to, yeah, this is kind of becoming straightforward, but automations are really, really cool. This is what they do. So I find the device again, server cabinet lights. If the door closes, just turn them off. There's no conditions on this at all. We just want to turn them off. And that's my second automation. And we just go back here. And then to get the third automation, I can't choose color, remember? So I have to create a scene. A scene is a, 
a way that you can do many things in one go. So in this case, I just want to turn on red lights. That is my scene. So server cabinet lights red is my scene. I could give an icon, but I can never remember the syntax and it doesn't give me any IntelliSense, so I often don't. Uh, server cabinet light, I can click on that light and here is the cool little widget that Home Assistant provides because it knows my LED strip is multicolor. And I can choose any color I want. So obviously I'm gonna turn right, turn, uh, choose red. I could choose blue as well, like that, or purple, or whatever color, but I'm gonna choose red. Put that in there, and that's the entirety of my scene. Very simple, just red lights. So now I can go in and create another automation of turning these lights red. So again, empty automation, I do like those best. And this is again, server cabinet lights. Uh, red is going to be this automation's naming, naming, naming people. Naming is so important in these things because we're gonna end up with a million things eventually and we wanna find things. So again, when the door sensor is opened, I wanna add a condition because now we are above 30. So I wanna go and see the uh, door sensor, so the server cabinet sensor rather, and the temperature of it. If that's above, I'm gonna go with 30.1 because I'm not sure what happens if both are 30. Does it, do they step on each other's toes? I haven't quite figured that out yet. But 30.1, and then the action is now no longer a device, it is a scene. So here, activate scene. It activates the, there we go the server cabinet light red and that is now my automation now one thing i just realized is that i need to create another scene for the white light because i only chose the bright light. i didn't choose the color of the light so i'm just going to create a new scene for the lights to go white so server cabinet light white and it's exactly the same as before choose the lights um, click on the on the device they have to be on because that's part of the scene, are they on or off? So turn them on, there we go. And then I'm gonna choose white, which is the middle there, and then brightness 100%. So I'm just gonna dial that way up. And that's my scene. That's the entirety of my scene. And now I can just go back to my other automation, which is the one that turns on the lights in white. And I can change that from uh, triggering the device to just turn on at bright to actually activating the scene. So that's the difference. So if the lights were green before, it would just have turned on the green lights. But now it turns on actual white lights. All right, I think we're done. Um, I've put the lights up. There's a door sensor. There's three automations. So there's, you know, turn off, which is easy, turn lights off. Then there's the two other automations with the scenes that we created, white and red. So this is just gonna be white now because it's not hot enough today. But I'll show you anyway what happens when I open the door. So, ready? Mm -hmm. ah, light comes off. So I obviously only have one door that activates it because I only have one door sensor, one side, but that's all right, I can do with that. But now it's white, um, and if I close the door, you can see here, sensor goes in, there you go, and it turns off. So there's a little bit of a lag, a little bit of a delay, but that's because the lights go via Wi-Fi. Uh, there is no integration in Home Assistant that allows you to go local, so that's just how it is. But it works, a treat. And I did test it with the red as well. Um, I heated up the door sensor in my hand, uh, sorry, not the door sensor, the temperature sensor. That's just lying here for the moment. And uh, when it was hot enough in there, they turned red when I opened the door. So they don't turn red if it's already open. They turn red when you open the door. So turn it off. Okay. So uh, thanks for watching. And please, please like the video and subscribe to my channel because I'm doing a lot more videos like this and everything else. So um, thanks for watching. Bye. See ya.